Well, this week in indoor football, we have a lot of things happening. A lot of things did indeed end up happening, and all of it, well, most of it was good. Some of it, not so much, but, you know, we got stuff. We got stuff this week, and let's talk first things first. Uh, before we get to the IFL and the NAL, let's talk the West Texas Warbirds. They were supposed to play a game against the Mississippi Raiders. That did not go as scheduled as uh, Mississippi. They didn't want to travel, and then they tried to, you know, put various reasons out there as to why, you know, they didn't want to come out and play, you know, like XFL workouts. There was actually XFL workouts today in Jackson, Mississippi, which is where Mississippi's located, and the players were tired, and yada, 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 you know, just a bunch of excuses to not come out and play. And, again, this is the same Mississippi Raiders team that played more games than the rest of their league combined, you know, and basically won a championship based off of, you know, being the only team that actually played and pretty much bought a championship, in my opinion. You know, that's what a lot of people are going to say, and, that, and I agree with some of those people. Um, so, unfortunately, that game didn't happen. But instead, the Dallas Prime, yes, famed indoor football beater, the Dallas Prime, came to West Texas. And unfortunately, fortunately, the game did not go well for the Prime. They got whipped 50-6, to and then a fight happened at the end as well. So that's, that's kind of bad. And it also seems like, you know, from our understanding... Uh, the AFA and West Texas are no longer together, so we have a team without a league. So West Texas, it's open season. It's open season out in Odessa. It's open season. So somebody is going to have to pick up West Texas and put them on a life raft. You know, um, organization that, you know, led by, you know, Leaf Curtis and company who have, you know, navigated throughout the pandemic and yet they finished their season undefeated yada 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 you know um, so West Texas looking for someplace else to play next season there's that uh, speaking of a league's looking for teams the Federated Arena League has announced they're looking for some teams I don't know why because this is the team this is the same league with only two teams in it um, and really those two teams should just go to the to elite indoor football or fold or do whatever uh, you don't need no more lower rung arena indoor football teams as I've stated so many times so the Federated Arena League Good, good on y'all for looking for teams, but I don't think y'all need to be looking for teams. I think you need to be looking for another league. Fold this one, go to the actual, the other, you know, one of the other lower tier leagues, and you know, Georgia Lina, Palmito. Hope y'all are watching. Um, please go to go to the EIF or you know something like that because this 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 is not. This is not something you know that you want to celebrate a two-team lead. All right, the big stuff: the IFL in the playoffs. It will be well. First, let's just go over the games you know that happened that were significant. Quad City they beat Iowa on Friday night. They beat them, which is crazy. And thus, you know, it came down to you know. Tucson, it came down to the Sioux Falls game, and, you know, Iowa and Quad City, they did not, neither clinched on Friday night, but Frisco, they beat Sioux Falls in a game that was wild and crazy, and Tucson took care of Bay Area, you know, in a game which was, that game was a lot closer than it needed to be, for whatever reason, so, <laughs> so, you're probably wondering, hey, what about Sioux Falls? Oh yeah, they're out for the first time. You know, nearly 20 years. Yeah, it's been about 20 years since Sioux Falls has last missed the playoffs, and that is the case this year. Sioux Falls, you are not going to the IFL playoffs. Iowa and Quad City, they both will go thanks to Frisco. Strength the schedule factor does not apply here as head-to-head -head 
does apply in this equation. Remember, head to head is the third tiebreaker over strike the schedule. So that means Frisco will host Iowa and Quad City will go to Massachusetts. And thus, there you have it. So Tucson, they locked up the three seed. Duke City, despite the fact that they beat Naz, they still are the four seed. So Friday night, we're going to have two games on Friday night. Frisco and Iowa, Quad City and Mass. And then Saturday night, Tucson and Naz. And then Sunday afternoon, or late Sunday evening, Duke City, Arizona. Four playoff games, going to be one hell of a time. And it's going to be one hell of a weekend, you know, next weekend. Thank you to the IFL for spacing out this weekend because I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I, I didn't think I didn't think we were going to have a, a whole weekend of indoor football. But here we are. We do. We have it. And in the NAL, Carolina, they got another new owner in the mix. They grabbed several players like Tommy Grady, Malachi Jones, you know, the works. And unfortunately, that did not work out for the Cobras tonight. They lost to the Columbus Lions, who have clinched the final spot in the NAL playoffs as Orlando got beat up by Albany. And Albany themselves have clinched a home playoff game, which means next week that last playoff spot, you know, that last, or rather that last home game, that other home game is up for grabs, so... It could mean that, you know, it's going to be either Jacksonville or Carolina or maybe even Columbus. It depends on how next week goes, you know, in the NAL. All three games are going to be at 6 o'clock next week, you know. Orlando's eliminated. And now, you know, San Antonio's been eliminated despite the fact that they beat Jacksonville tonight. But, hey, San Antonio's... They, they got things working out there. I don't know why. I don't know how, but they got things working. So, there it is. And so, there you have it. You know, there's that. So, playoffs in the NAL are mostly set. Not all the way, but mostly. And lastly, something that wasn't supposed to be announced yet, I believe, was Fayetteville, North Carolina getting a team. Now, Fayetteville has had plenty of of indoor arena teams in the past and this is no different the last team to play at Fayetteville was the Cape Fear Heroes and they were last in the AAL so you know it's um I believe a chiropractor is the owner of this Fayetteville team not the old owner who you know the old owner of that Cape, Cape Fear Heroes team who had to leave because she had health problems this new owner um you know, hopefully that team gets marketed well and everything goes well. So Fayetteville, um, seventh team of the AL. Uh, and honestly, you know, it doesn't look like anybody's folding. I don't think anybody's going to fold this year. You know, the way San Antonio turned it around, I don't think they're folding. I think they're staying. Um, so, you know. Carolina, one of Carolina's owners talked about, you know, tonight that there could be up to 12 teams in the NAL next year, but who knows? In all honesty, um, I, I was actually asleep most of the night, so I, I caught, you know, the ends of most of these games tonight, and there you have it. So, the NAL set, IFL set, uh, well, IFL's completely set as the quarterfinals are next week. And the NAL, um, we're just trying to figure out what in the world is going to happen. Because Albany, they still could get the one seed. They could fall to maybe the two or the three. Or rather, they could fall to the two, not the, not, not the three. They have a home playoff game. And, you know, Carolina and Jacksonville are going to face off one more time. So, you know, and the other two games next week in the NAL are going to be crazy as well because Orlando... And San Antonio are chomping at the bit, you know, they're chomping at the bit to see, you know, what in the world's going to happen because they can alter some things when it comes to the NAL playoffs. Until next Sunday at about 8 o'clock p.m. Central, I'll see you soon. Good night, everybody.